1956. The car that brings you the look of success. The feel of success. The power of success. The car born of success to challenge the future. Dodge and the Dodge Dealers of America presents the winners of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Award. Danny Thomas as Danny Williams. Gene Hagen as Margaret Williams with Sherry Jackson and Rusty Hamer as their children in Make Room for Daddy. Well, I gotta go now. Rusty, you haven't finished your breakfast. Well, I'm not hungry. Besides, I gotta get off to school. You've got a half hour before you do at school. Well, I just like to hang around the school building. It inspires me. <laughs> you are not leaving this house until your father signs that blue slip you came home with. Oh, good, a preposition. <laughs> a what? You said, until your father signs a blue slip you came home with. With is a preposition and should never be used to end a sentence. My teacher wants us to get some grammatical errors, and all I need is a few more and I'll be all set. Well, your, <laughs> when your father gets up, you'll be loaded. <laughs> yeah, you'll be loaded and I'll be murdered. <laughs> Look, Russ, it's your own fault. If you're going to come home from school with unsatisfactory reports, then you've just got to learn to pay the fiddler. And your father draws a pretty mean bow. Are you going to show this slip to Daddy? Yes, I have to. Oh, Mom. <laughs> you wouldn't do that to your only son, would you? Mm -hmm. All right, you little conniver. I'll see what I can do. I'll buddy your daddy up until he's in a good mood, and then at the proper time, I'll say, now. Now? Yeah, I'll say now, and then you whip out the blue slip and put it on the table. You're a pal, Mommy. <laughs> oh. Good morning, family. Oh, good morning, dear. Good morning. Hi, Ross, you get a haircut, you look great. Now, Mom? What? Uh, uh, sweetheart, uh, why didn't you eat the uh, snack I left out for you last night? Oh, I don't know, I just didn't want none. Oh, oh good, a double negative. Huh? Uh, I, I thought you'd like bologna. Oh, I do, I love it, except it's kind of late. I'm glad I didn't eat this way. I had a nice night's sleep. I feel wonderful. Now? <laughs> now, bit. Uh, what would you like for breakfast, honey? Some, uh, some pancakes and, and bacon or some waffles? Something special? Anything your lovely hands prepare? Okay with me. I feel great. Mornings at seven, the hillside dew pearled. God's in his heaven. All's right with the world. Mommy, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's now or never. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's all he said since I walked in. Is now, no, no. What is it? What's going on? I'm late for school, Daddy, so sign this for me, will you? Yeah. I'm in a hurry, so don't waste any time reading. <laughs> Get your fingers off, huh? I got a feeling somebody's trying to railroad me into something. I can just smell it. You don't have to smell it, Daddy. Just sign it. <laughs> Notify you that Russell's work in history is unsatisfactory. How come it's unsatisfactory? Well, we had a tough test. Tough? Yeah, stuff like who's the mayor of New York. <laughs> That's supposed to be tough. Anybody knows that. Stop anybody in the street, ask a five-year-old child to tell you who's the mayor of New York. In 1756? <laughs> <laughs> See, honey, it was a tough test. Hold on, and look it up like the rest of the kids. I'll tell you why, because he's a wise guy. <laughs> of all the aggravating things a person can be, that's what my son is. <laughs> oh, wonderful. A dangling participle. All right, Terry, that's not a bad, dear. <laughs> Unsatisfactory. Doesn't matter what we do for this kid, I mean, nothing helps. I don't know what to really say. <gasps> a split infinitive and a beaut. <laughs> What's going on here? What are you hocking me with dangling infinitives and split particles? Daddy, you made a grammatical error. You should have said, I really don't know what to say. Now, look, Terry, this is neither the time nor the place for you to do your homework. 
If I don't get a Denny yell at me, and if I try to get a Denny yell at me. I told you and told you I don't want you reading at the table. Well, you never say anything when Daddy reads his newspaper. Daddy's different. He's the breadwinner of the family. All right, I'll get a job. <laughs> now, look here, young lady. I don't want you talking that way. Well, what's the matter with the way I talk? At least I don't dangle participles and split infinitives. <laughs> One more crack about my English, and I'm going to dangle my belt right across your double negative. <laughs> That's the way to bring up your daughter? Oh, sure, my daughter, my daughter. When she comes home with A's on her report card, then she's your daughter. But just let her do something wrong, then, then she's my daughter. And what kind of help are you then? All you do is, is raise your voice and yell. So what are you, Silent Sam? <laughs> you don't go around here whispering, you know. The only reason I raise my voice is so that I can be heard above you. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. All right, you don't have to sign it. Just push your initials on it. Get out of here. <laughs> this family's getting completely out of hand. Look, why don't you just lower your voice and sign it so that Rusty can get to school? Here, you sign it. They don't want my signature. They want yours. Forge it. <laughs> Going. Find the tallest building in town and jump. <laughs> That's an improved size from the fact that you don't bounce. <laughs> You're very funny. You're a very funny woman. You really are. I don't know why I spend money on comedy material. I should let you write my jokes. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Don't do that. Why not? You just want me to lose the argument. <laughs> Precisely. I want to talk to you. Oh, come on, honey. Now, cut it out. Come on. Come on. Come on, sit down. Now, there we are. Now, look, sweetheart, I I've got to talk to you. About what? About Terry and Rusty. What about them? Look, do you honestly think that the proper way to bring up children is to roar at them like an angry lion? I don't know. The way they roar back at me, I'm like a cocker spaniel. <laughs> No wonder we haven't been evicted. We're certainly the loudest family in the whole building. What are you talking about? Everybody else yells. All families yell. Yeah, not like us. Come on, knock off. You're making it sound like we're barbarians. Ah, uh, uh, see what I mean? Okay, okay. So I raise my voice a little. Well, it's not only you, honey. I do it too. You start, I join. Terry screams, Rusty yells. If we had a parrot, it'd have an ulcer in a week. <laughs> What are you supposed to do when your kids get out of line? Pelt them with rose petals? No, but you don't have to clobber them with cobblestones. What do I do when my son comes home with an unsatisfactory mark from school? What do I say, Russell, I'm sorry your teacher doesn't appreciate your sterling qualities? And my daughter makes fun of me like I'm, I'm an ignoramus or something. What am I supposed to say? Oh, Terry dear, I'm so sorry about my dangling participle. <laughs> I, I'll go to night school and study English. <laughs> we don't have to go that far, but we, we ought to learn to keep our voices down. Okay, so I'll keep my voice down. It isn't only the yelling, it's other things too. I mean, we, we ought to stop uh, threatening them with punishments for, for every little thing that they do. Okay, I'll stop threatening them. Oh, uh, when you say it like that, I know you don't mean it. I mean it, I mean it. What do you want to do, post a bond? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't want you to post a bond. I just want you to promise me that, well, that, that from now on, you, you will speak to the children in a gentle, considerate tone of voice. Honestly, sweetheart, just try it for a while. You, you'll see that it'll, it'll create a whole new atmosphere. It'll be much better for the children. Now on, I'll be uh, sweet as pumpkin pie. Good. With whipped cream on top. <laughs> Cherry on top of that. And a dill pickle yet. Now oh, you're making me sick. <laughs> what about you? You do a pretty good in the screaming department yourself, you know. Same thing goes for me. Same promise. Without the dill pickle on the top. <laughs> it's a deal. It's a deal. No more screaming and hollering and no more threatening to punish. Right. From now on, all is courtesy and kindness in this house. Shall we practice? Practice? Okay. Yes, let's. Okay. Quiet. 
Oh, you beautiful, lovely woman, you. I have got the greatest husband in the whole world. Why don't you ditch the bum and marry me? Cut it out. We're practicing. Wifey, dear. Yes, dear? How's about the greatest wife in the whole world making the greatest lunch for the greatest husband? Uh, I'd be only too happy to. Oh, beloved. Yes, dear? I forgot to mention it, but I won't be coming home after work tonight. Ooh. I'm going to play cards with the boys in the orchestra. <laughs> Is it all right? All right. Well, of course, darling. I, I hope you have a very enjoyable time. Thank you. And while I think of it, dear, uh, I just decided to go window shopping today, so I won't be able to fix your lunch. You'll just have to open a can of something. I hope you don't mind. Oh, not at all. Not at all. I wouldn't think of inconveniencing you. <laughs> sickening, isn't it? Yeah, it's sickening, but we're going to go through with it. and drive the car with the look, the feel, the power of success. The 56 Dodge, value leader of the forward look. Time you start tiptoeing, there's got to be something wrong. What's the matter? I didn't mean to do it, Daddy. It was an accident. Honest. I don't even know what you're talking about. Let's keep it that way. Holy. <laughs> well, now, you're in some kind of trouble now. I want you to confide in Daddy. What is it? No, Daddy. I'm afraid. Afraid? Daddy's your best friend. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid my best friend's gonna kill me. <laughs> what kind of talk is that? If you can't talk to your father, who can you talk to? The police. Rusty. <laughs> now, uh, just control yourself, huh? You're, uh, in some kind of trouble. You've done something wrong, no doubt, and, uh, I want you to tell me what it is. Now, uh, no matter what you've done, I am not going to punish you. You want a bet? <laughs> Russell, let's stop fooling around, shall we? Now, what is it? Something the matter? Oh, uh, uh, our son is afraid. Afraid? Yes, he's obviously done something naughty. And when I tell him that I won't punish him, he won't believe me. 
If you could hear yourself talk, you wouldn't believe you either. Oh, Rusty, don't be silly. If your father says he won't punish you, then he won't. You promise? I promise. Well, I threw a baseball and broke the window of Shelmeyer's bakery. What? <laughs> La 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 all, you just have to see Mr. Shellmeyer and pay him for the window. Mm -hmm. What can it cost? Fifteen dollars? Fifteen dollars and twenty-five cents. <laughs> when the window was broken, I stuck in my hand and took out our donut. <laughs> Rusty, dear, a donut doesn't cost a quarter. I know, but when I was taking the donut, my hand got stuck in a chocolate eclair. <laughs> and you took the eclair? Mommy told us wherever we touch, we have to eat. If you uh, fret about it, I'll take care of the whole thing. Now, you see, honey, that wasn't so bad. Now, what were you afraid of? I was afraid Daddy'd scream his head off. <laughs> like he always does. No, I don't know why you should think that, son. I rarely ever scream. Daddy, are you sure you feel well? Yes, I, I feel quite well, thank you. Are you sure you don't want to punish me? No, it's the farthest thing from my mind, Russell. Well, in that case, I'm going to have a black eye tomorrow. Hmm? A black eye? What do you mean? Well, I'll go to school tomorrow, and I'll tell Jimmy about the whole thing. He'll say I'm a liar. I'll have to fight him, and he'll give me a black eye like he always does. <laughs> Guess what happened? What? Mommy and Daddy have lost their marbles. <laughs> Rusty, would you please tell me what you're talking about? Have you done anything wrong lately? Rusty, you're not making sense. Well, if you've done anything wrong, now's the time to get it off your chest. Rusty, I think you lost your marbles. No, Terry, I mean it. I broke the window of Shellmeyer's bakery, and Daddy didn't get mad at me. He didn't yell at me, nothing. Nothing? Nothing, he just said, what an unfortunate occurrence. <laughs> but boys will be boys. Our daddy looked just like him. Hello, Mommy. Hello, dear. Hello, Daddy. Hello, dear. <laughs> Isn't it terrible about Rusty breaking Shomar's window? Uh, terrible? Well, you know, homeboys will be boys. <laughs> I bet you were, you were very furious. Furious? What for? Yes, after all, it was just an unfortunate episode. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Because I had an unfortunate episode, too. You did, dear? Yes. I was waiting for a more opportune time to tell you, but I don't think it's going to get any more opportune than this. <laughs> what, what is it, dear? Well, you know that bottle of devastating perfume Daddy brought you back from Paris? Terry, you didn't! <laughs> <laughs> Yes, dear, I, I remember it. Uh, something happened to the bottle? <laughs> oh, no, Mother. The, the bottle's fine. Fine. But, you see, I took it to school with me, and I was showing it off to my girlfriends, and, and I let each of them have a little dab, and when the bottle got back to me, it was empty. <laughs> You're so lucky to have so many friends. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
in a cherry? I just remembered. I, I saw that bottle of perfume on my bureau. It was filled at the top. Oh, yes, I know. I filled it with vanilla extract. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all, dear? <laughs> yes, that's all. Well, I have to go look for something now. No. Look for something? Marbles. <laughs> Marbles? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody sure lost a lot of them around here. <laughs> What happened to your golf shoes? They're all wet. Our dear son, Russell, who was amusing himself playing a game called Sink the Navy. <laughs> Those are two battleships. <laughs> they were both sunk. Danny, uh, you didn't break our pact. I mean, you didn't lose your temper? Honey, if I had lost my temper, would I be speaking in this tone of voice? <laughs> well, I'm... Uh... I'm very proud of you, dear. I, I know just how you feel. On top of everything else, Terry took my new wool sweater that she soiled and put it in the washing machine. Now I can wear it as a mitten. <laughs> Did you? No. No. I, I restrained myself. <clears throat> When's this restraint going to start paying off? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, hi, kids. <laughs> Children, um, if you drop your clothes on the floor that way, you're going to get them all soiled. <laughs> yeah, I guess we will, won't we? <laughs> Which of you two dear little angels squeezed the tube of toothpaste into my bedroom slippers? <laughs> I did. What about it? Nothing. I just... Want to be sure which one to buy toothpaste for. <laughs> Russell, did you put your frog in my bed last night? Yeah, what of it? I think I just wanted to report that he had a very good night's sleep. <laughs> now, children, don't you think you ought to pick up your coats? <laughs> You know something, baby? What? I got a strange feeling our children don't love us anymore. Well, Rusty, it's no use. They just don't love us. Just don't care anymore. But gosh, Terry, why should they stop caring all of a sudden? They loved us up until now. Well, who can figure your parents? <laughs> Gosh, I used to get punished for things I didn't do. <laughs> now I can't even get punished for things I do do. <laughs> uh. And now a word from our alternate sponsor, Pell Mell, famous cigarettes. Reward yourself. Reward yourself with the pleasure of smooth smoking. Refresh yourself with freshly lit flavor. Smoke longer and finer and milder pell-mell. Enjoy smooth, gentle mildness. Pell-mell is never strong, and it tastes freshly lit puff after puff. Here's why. Pell-mells are longer. Their greater length travels the smoke further, filters the smoke, and makes it mild. But you get more than greater length. Pell-mell tobaccos are finer. The finest quality money can buy. And remember, fine tobacco is its own best filter. You get a self-filtering action that makes your pell-mell milder. So mild, so cool, so delicious, it tastes freshly lit puff after puff. Choose well, smoke pell-mell. Buy pell-mell famous cigarettes in the distinguished red package today. Outstanding, and they are mild. <laughs> What's the matter with you kids? You haven't touched your breakfast. Mine, but eat if you want to grow. I don't want to grow. <laughs> well, I guess if he doesn't want to grow, we can't force him. <laughs> Terry, 
Mary, dear. Maybe, uh, maybe you'd like some strawberries on your cornflakes. They're very good that way. Mother, why don't you stop pretending? Pretending what? Pretending that you care whether we eat or not. But we do care. Do not. You don't care if we die. I wish I were dead. Well, Terry, now you can't mean that. I do mean it. Well, Terry, why do you feel that way? Because for the last week, you two have been acting like strangers. That isn't so. It is so. You're stranger than anybody. <laughs> you don't love us. We, we don't love you. That's right. You don't love us. Why, for the past week, you, you, you've just been acting completely indifferent toward us. Why, why, no matter what we did, you just ignore us. Well, if I said I was going down to Times Square to play in traffic, you'd probably say, all right, Terry, but try not to be late for dinner. <laughs> Terry, how did she get that impression? Well, I think uh, I know how she got that impression, dear. You do? Yeah. From your forstunken idea. <laughs> Danny, please, let me handle this. I Can did you? let you handle it. Look what happened. He's starving to death and she wants to kill herself and slap me. Danny, you're raising your voice. You bet your sweet patootie I'm raising my voice. And I'm going to continue to raise it, too. And I'm going to raise my kids. What do you think of that? Danny. Listen, you two monsters. Danny, we made a pact. Pact, smack, butt out. Danny? I'll tell her in on. I said butt out, butt out. I will not butt out, butt out. Danny, butt out. Girl, who's raising her voice? I have to raise my voice so that I can be heard above you. Is that so? Yeah, so. <laughs> you and your ideas. Go on, go ahead. Keep your voice down. Make the house nice and cheerful. And don't threaten the children. Where'd you get that deal from? One of those silly books you read? I learn more from those silly books I read than you learn in those songs you play in. Don't knock the saloons, kid. We eat from the saloons. The saloons pay the rent. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Aren't these cornflakes delicious, sister? <laughs> they sure are, brother dear. Have the strawberries, will you please? <laughs> now you two listen to me. <laughs> I'm speaking, pay attention. <laughs> Young man, for breaking Schalmeyer's window, you will get no allowance for the next month. Okay, Dad. <laughs> and for being so generous with my perfume, you will receive no allowance for one month. All right, Mommy. <laughs> for boiling my golf shoes, you will caddy for me for the next three Saturdays. Yes, sir. And for shrinking my sweater, no television for one week. Yes, Mommy. And for throwing your coat... All right already. You don't have to love us that much. <laughs> Two, three, oh, push a button and go. Two, three, oh, push a button and go. What the better half is trying to convey, folks, is that you should stop in at your Dodge dealers and drive the new 230 horsepower Dodge V8 with push button driving. And we'll see you next week for Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. Good, Good night. night. Cigarettes and the dependable Dodge dealer in your neighborhood.